Okay guys, um, so I have been asked quite a few times by people here on YouTube and some people on Reddit as well to have some kind of videos with tutorial type stuff going on in them. So I thought that I should probably start doing a series of videos where I'll film myself colouring my most current piece um, and so at certain points I'll talk about what I'm doing you know maybe I'll be doing an eye or some some hair or something and I'll start talking about it and I'll demonstrate to you what I'm doing and possibly you know some other different stuff as well depending on what you guys want so you know after you've watched this video if you can leave a comment or two say what you think you know what kind of stuff you'd like me to cover there's there's an awful lot to talk about right so at the moment I am doing a picture of Alan Rickman and he died recently he was one of my favorite actors especially because of his role as Snape and so I thought you know it's probably time to do a picture of him and I usually trawl the internet trying to find a good reference that has enough detail for me to do something that's got a big impact. So I, I don't like stuff that's sort of soft or low resolution. You know, I like to try and find a photo of that celebrity or whoever I happen to be doing that is fairly high res, you know, two megapixels or four megapixels kind of thing. So this is the reference that I've actually got at the moment. You guys can see. It's not incredible if I zoom in, you can see it's it's a bit sort of gets a bit grainy and, but it is nonetheless, you know, a nice high res, high contrast picture with lots and lots of sort of details with its wrinkles and these you know little hairs. Um and also some nice shadows as well, which makes a difference as well when you're, when you're picking a reference. I'm guessing you'd have noticed by now that I, I use a grid here. Um, this basically enables me to keep track of all these little textures, you know, especially in places like the cheek. I don't know if you can see much here. It's, it's like a big wasteland of just textures and you can get really lost in that. Um, when you're trying to do something that's very realistic. The other helpful thing with a grid is that when using coloured pencils there, there isn't much room for error so you kind of need to have the proportions down and, and having a grid means that you're not sketching out something you know making sure all the proportions are constantly correct moving things around with graphite which then will smudge your rather nice Bristol um, board paper. This is Strathmore Bristol 500 series. Um, it is not for sketching and erasing and sketching on really. It's, it's a very hard surface. You're going to see marks if you, if you want to do that. If you want to, if you want to practice sketching and proportions um, I would do that in a sketchbook and I would do that from life. That's the best way to do that. Um, if you can't do it from life, you can do it from photos as well. But life is always best. Um, but that's a completely separate subject. What I'm doing here is rendering. I'm basically colouring and rendering everything that I see here. Textures, um, the lines, the highlights, and you know, I'll do it because I absolutely love doing this. It's, it's so much fun and I like to just get right into it 
put on an audiobook, get my colours ready, and just, it's like a big adventure, you know? Um, I'll probably carry on now with this cheek right here. So what we've got at the moment is his cheek at this point of the picture, it's quite a soft, that there isn't too much texture to it and it's not that in focus. So we can start off using a quite a light skin tone and just gently start bringing in the colour because it's quite soft. I like starting quite soft anyway, um, even if it's somewhere quite textured most of the time um, because it lays a good foundation for you to work over. Um, you can always erase a bit, you know, you can erase details out like these little bits here on his nose. So you don't need to worry too much, you know, if you, if you lay down something slightly wrong, you can, you know, erase and work over it and change it. You just can't change, you know, a blatant black line going through something or quite strong colours. You know, it's very difficult to change very strong colours. Um, especially if you want to bring it back to white. That's something that's very hard to do. I will go into that in future videos. Right now, there isn't too much of that going on. So, here we go. We're, we're doing the cheek. And we're just bringing in this light colour. There is a little bit of direction here on his cheek. You can see a few textures going this way. So we're going to add those in as well. A lot of people always ask me um, what colours, what pe pencils I use. Um, I like to use a combination of Caran d'Ache Luminance and uh, Faber-Castell uh, Polychromos. The advantage to using different brands is, well, A, they feel different to you, so you might prefer the feel of one over another, but the main advantage is that you get a lot more colours. So, you know, this is, this is the, uh, this is the, the Luminance, the Caran d'Ache um, light, lightest sort of flesh colour you can get. It's called Burnt Ochre 10%. So if we look here, it's, you know, it's, it is really quite a light flesh colour. Perfect for sort of adding very subtle bases to things um, as a start, much like what I'm doing here. Um, this is the this is the Faber Castell one. It's actually called light flesh. Yeah, it's the lightest flesh tone you can get in that range. And this one's actually even lighter, and it has a slightly more a slightly more red hue to it. The Caran d'Ache one is I don't know if you guys can see it's it's sort of it's slightly more yellow than the Faber-Castell one, if you can have a look there. So, you know, if I'm doing something very, very light, like here, I, I usually like to start with this, but this is also good if the skin tone is slightly more yellow in comparison. Now, as you can see, I'm just getting rid of this grid here. Don't really need it anymore, to be honest. We've got all this stuff mapped out at the moment. Um, yeah, so just keep going. Building it up slowly. I think I'd be probably a bit faster if I wasn't talking, I'd imagine. I'm, I've actually never done this before, talking through whilst drawing. Um, so now, let's have a look closer. I hope you can see. There's something here. It's a bit, it's a bit darker here. And the flesh, there's a couple of textures coming in as well. So we want, we want to make that happen. Now I really like the cinnamon by uh, Faber Castell on the, in the Polychromos range. It's a great one for adding sort of little details into lighter 
uh, flesh areas. So this is a slightly darker patch, just sort of emphasizing the edge of his nose by being there. So here we go, I'm just adding some more of this in. And you notice I'm doing sort of uh, small gentle circles. When, when you're adding a, a kind of basic tone into an area, you want to be gentle, you want to do small circles until you feel that it looks right. And you can see here the nose actually looks quite a lot brighter there so we're going to probably have to brighten that bit up um, because I actually haven't finished this part of the nose yet. Now I like to press a bit harder and add these little sort of flecks that we can see here. We can see it's a little even darker just here so let's use some relevant colours to bring it back. So this one here, I think it's called, I think it's a Venetian red, it's just, I know it by what colour it is, it's just, oh yeah I think it's a Venetian red this one by Polychromos. That's a kind of even darker flesh. So here we go, um, add a bit more here to the edge of where the nose meets the skin there. Okay. We've emphasized this a little bit more now. And you can see this the nose here is separated out a bit more. Now, I like burnishing sometimes. Burnishing is a technique where you go back over the same area and um, you work into it a bit harder. Um, so right here we've got something where it sort of feels a bit lighter, like it's slightly lighter than just here. So what we're going to do is just burnish that a little to so just get that effect. I know I've added those bits of texture there but it's nice to work and rework. It's quite important to do that and be patient. And it's really important to keep on going and you know don't just sort of colour a bit and be satisfied straight away. You can always do more. Always. It's almost more about learning when to stop. And luckily with pencil crayons there's only so far you can go you know, before the paper won't take any more, or you can't lay any more on top of the colour that's already there. So, um, you know, when that happens, and you're not, if you're not satisfied, you can then erase and try again. Um, but you know, I rarely do that now. Only in very specific situations, if something's gotten a bit clogged up and I don't like the way it looks, I might uh, redo it. So, now here we've got a bit of direction going on here, on his cheek, we've, it's sort of, you can see a bit of direction happening, sloping down like this. So we want to emphasise those things, much like I have here, this is a really obvious part, um, or on the cheek, the cheek is slightly more subtle but you can still, you still have a feeling of the direction. It's very important to do that, but only when it's necessary, only when you can see it. Because this is a photo, we, we've got to consider the fact that certain parts of it are soft, and that softness is what adds to the realism, um, because it's what's out of focus, and that's, that's what you get with a camera. But this bit here is not quite out of focus. It's, it's slightly softer than here, but it's not out of focus like here on the edge of the cheek or around here where the you can't really see the um, eyelashes because it's very sort of soft and out of focus. Right, 
Right. And again, um, <clears throat> we've got some little darker bits, which we can emphasise with the cinnamon from the polychromos range. It's really important to keep on looking at what you're drawing constantly. Backwards and forwards. My eyes are darting backwards and forwards all the time. Really good way to actually get all that information and process it, put it on the page. Right. So, I think I'm going to fast forward now. Okay guys, so um, yeah, I just pretty much uh, done a bit there for you guys to have a little look at. Um, the cheek there, I might might add a bit more as I go along, I kind of end up going back a little bit sometimes, like I did just there. Um, but yeah, there we have it. Um, leave some comments about what you'd like me to discuss for the next video. Um, I think I might do a video um, talking about hair because um, I'm going to be coming across some pretty difficult hair in this one. Um, as you can see, lots of silvery grey hair here. Um, so yeah, that, that'll be an interesting video to do, but quite advanced and um, pretty tough. If there's, if there's something else you guys might want me to discuss first, um, or if you want me to do another video when I'm doing, I don't know, that forehead, let's say, do leave a few comments. I want to know what kind of videos you guys are interested in. Um... That's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you hopefully next week when I put out the next episode. Thanks, guys!